Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing DMG blockchain stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. DMG blockchain is a vertically integrated blockchain and cryptocurrency company. The company is headquartered in Grand Forks, British Columbia, Canada and was founded in 2016. It went public in 2018 and trades on the TSX Venture. OTC and Deutsche Börse. It manages, operates, and develops end-to-end -end digital solutions to monetize the blockchain ecosystem. Its three main divisions are data center operations, data analytics, and forensic enterprise blockchains. Its non-polluting data center operations focuses on earning eco-friendly revenues from block rewards and transaction fees by mining primarily Bitcoin as well as providing hosting services for industrial mining clients powered by renewable energy. Its team includes seasoned crypto experts, forensic and financial professionals, and blockchain developers, all with deep relationships throughout the industry. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 157 million market cap. They're trading at 95 cents a share and they have 165 million shares outstanding. We're looking at the ticker that trades on the TSX Venture. So all the numbers in this video are in Canadian dollars. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have positive free cash flow in 2020, negative in the other years. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that goes down each year from 11 million to 10 million down to 7 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Then you have your operating expenses. Examples of operating expenses are research and development, marketing and depreciation. Below that is operating income, which is negative every year since they're still not bringing in too much revenue at this point. They pay 284,000 of interest on their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. Most of their other income and expenses are the gain on asset sales. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. They were able to generate 1.4 million of positive operating cash flow in 2020, even though they had negative net income. They also had positive operating cash flow in the trailing 12 months. So it looks like things are improving for this company. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow which was negative every year, except in 2020, it was positive half a million. Since the company loses money almost every year, they need funds from somewhere to run their business. Most of their money comes from the $35 million they raised when they IPO'd in 2018. It looks like they're paying down debt. They paid down 1.2 million in 2019 and 3.8 million in 2020. Let's look at the capital structure, $18 million of equity, $2 million of debt. They're 91% equity and 9% debt. Their net debt is negative 5 million, so they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $5 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 17.8%, and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's 362 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $157 million, which is what they're trading at right now. Since it was really difficult valuing this company's future revenues and future free cash flows, I showed you what their free cash flows need to be in the next seven years in order for their current stock price to be trading at intrinsic value. If they're able to generate $54 million of free cash flow by 2027, their stock price is trading appropriately. But if you believe their free cash flow will be a lot higher than $54 million, you should buy the stock. If you think it's going to be lower than 54 million, you may not want to buy the stock. Most companies convert 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So that equates to $540 million of revenue in 2027. 
Do you think they're going to get that much revenue in 2027, $540 million? If you do, then the stock is a good buy. One analyst was pricing this stock and their stock price was $1.50. So they were saying the stock is undervalued. The top chart is the stock price since it started trading. So it looks like the stock came down the first several months and then it was pretty flat for a long time and then the price was really driven up. Then the stock price came crashing down. It looks like it's trading below its price when it IPO'd. This chart is easy to look at. This is the stock price the last 12 months. So you could see it was flat for several months. Then it looks like investors got really excited about the stock and bought it and drove the price up. Then they sold off. And then there was a big push and the stock price was over $4 a share, but it came crashing down. With companies like this that don't generate a lot of revenue, the stock price movement is based off of news stories. Or the stock price moves with the industry. If other companies in this industry are doing well, then this company's stock may do well. If other companies struggle, then their stock may struggle. The company was founded in 2016. They raised $28 million in private equity in 2017. Then they IPO'd in 2018. In 2018, they acquired Blockseer. This helped improve the company's data analytics and forensics. In November 2018, they completed their 85 megawatt crypto mining substation. In 2019, they partnered with IBM. In 2020, they received a power export license. Also in 2020, they reviewed over 1 billion blockchain transactions. In 2020, they launched Blockseer Pool. This was the world's first with clean blocks. In January 2021, they had licensing discussions with Marathon Digital. Then they closed a $70 million private placement offering. After that, they partnered with Argo Blockchain. In April, they closed a $28 million private offering. This is a really volatile stock. Their beta is 4.38, so the stock moves four times the market. The stock has gone up over 600% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 38%. The 52-week low was $0.07, cents, the high was 534 and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 3 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 165 million shares outstanding, 162 million are on float. One half of 1% of the shares are held by institutions, and only 0.14% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up over 700%, whilst industry went up only 39% and the market 40%. In the past three years, this stock has done really well also, up 135%, it's industry 61%, and a market 32%. But if you bought the stock in the last 30 days or 90 days, you might be down a lot. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 10%, it's industry 16%, and a market 13%. In the past year, their earnings increased 70%, it's industry 37%, and a market 15%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd be at $6,200 today. That's a 38% loss. The CEO of the company is the biggest shareholder at 2.19%. The next one is Vident, then Van Eck, then another executive at the company, then Harvest Portfolios. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at a PE. Their price to sales is 22.8, so investors are paying $22.80 for $1 revenue. Their price to book is 8.6, which is a little better than the market average. They have a negative return on invested capital, negative interest coverage ratio, and negative ROE. They can almost cover their current liabilities with their current assets and their current assets are 7.2 million of cash and 1.4 million of receivables. So the company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative $300,000 of free cash flow, negative $500,000 of working capital, working capital's current assets minus current liabilities. So they're short $800,000. They're gonna need more debt or equity financing to get through the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 29 companies in the same industry as DMG. The averages of all 29 companies are right here. DMG has a negative PE ratio, so we can't look at that. They are doing better than average in price to sales and price to book. They're doing worse in current ratio, a little worse in ROE. They're lower in debt than average, and they're a really small company, 157 million market cap. The average is 33 billion.
And of course, they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, the cryptocurrency market is really hot right now. So this company's stock price can go up just based off of momentum. But of course, in the long run, they do need to bring in revenue or else the company will not go anywhere. It looks like they have some really good people running this company and they have some really good partnerships and a bunch of interesting licensing relationships. So if they continue on this path, they should be successful, but they need to continue raising capital, whether through debt or equity financing, because they're not bringing in enough revenue at this point to run their business. I rank their free cash flows two out of 10, their revenue three out of 10, and their ratios four out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.